um, I actually am a uh, casualty. I had a business that was a casualty of a dot com, the previous dot com bubble. So I hope to share with you some ideas on how to avoid being that casualty, as those who never learn from history are doomed to repeat it. In uh, the first dot com bubble started in apparently 199, but it should be 1995. <laughs> it was about five years, and um, it lasted about five years with uh, the World Wide Web taking off and creating a new frontier, and it started to burst in 2000. It was an area where we had um, virtual real estate skyrocketing in value. Wine.com sold for $2.9 million, and in the current environment, we have Diamond.com selling for $7.5 million as virtual real estate. IPOs were crazy at the time. If you remember VA Linux, that was a system that uh, when they went public, they sold at a high of $300 per share. And uh, then with, by the, within a the year, they were down to $9 a share. And then we have Pandora Networks, which um, last year has already lost $500 billion in valuation. In 1998, the top 10 IPOs, you can see those parentheses there, will tell you that nine of the top 10, the year before they went IPO, did not show a profit at all. That's, that's the amount of loss that they had. There was a lot of exuberance. When the dot-com bubble burst in 2007, you see there was only three of those. People started to be a lot more careful in how they invested their money. And then in 2011, the current environment, we are back to seven of the top 10 IPOs are not showing a profit and are actually losing valuation. So are we in a bubble? That's a big question. Um, you also have things like, uh, I read an article recently with Zuckerberg was uh, taking prospective engineers on tours through the woods to try to show them his domain and saying things like money isn't an option. It actually, um, or isn't an object. It actually reminded me of the thousand dollar arrow chairs of that day. We also have irrational exuberance. Uh, that was the term of the day where the more business that, the kind of money that was fun funneled to these venture capitalists the more business they made, the more money they lost. The more customers they had, the more money they lost. And in today's environment, we have also business models that show some cracks, like Airbnb with their um, not doing due diligence and having strangers turn their house keys over to other strangers. But there are survivors in that environment. All of these companies were ones that suffered greatly from the bubble bursts, but were able to actually survive and able to do something that others didn't do, like my company. Not only were there survivors, there were thrivers. Companies like Google and Amazon, who arguably have made the current environment. Without Google, there is no Web 2.0. And they did really well by just doing what they did well and just doing their business all along. And it's quite possible that there is a bubble of bubble talk right now, where um, there's a lot of hysteria about a bubble. These are headlines from 2006 and 2007 all worried about is the bubble going to burst right now. So it doesn't matter, it turns out, that if you have earned a bubble or not, if you actually execute good sound business principles, then you will be able to work through those bubbles in your startup. First of those sound business principles is to have a business model. One of the survivors of the previous dot-com bubble burst, uh, the way he said it is, the internet doesn't change the laws of physics. The internet doesn't change the laws of business. At some point, you have to show a profit. Also, number two, you need to focus on your product. You need to actually realize that you have a product that gives value to customers. And if your product is just to make venture capitalists or uh, IPOs excitable, then, then maybe you're in the wrong business. Also, listen to your customers. Make sure that you are building what they want. Don't take, give, don't tell them what they want. Let them tell you what they want and then create that. Next, uh, because after you listen to your customers and you get that view, then since you're small and you can actually be nimble, then be, be nimble. Go ahead and execute what those customers are telling you and do it quickly. That's something that the big guys cannot do. And lastly, build your company with a set of core shared values. That way, the people in your company will be able to help. Will be able to help you build it along. 
In the previous IPO, there were a lot of people, uh, in the dot-com bubble, there were a lot of people who would wait for the IPO and then sell out immediately. Now we have things like sec second market that people can sell out even before you go public. And you don't really want those employees, you want ones that are gonna help you grow. So focus on your customers, and that will give you purpose for your, uh, for, uh, your employees and for yourself.